Yes, we should be guided by the scriptures. Yes, we must be guided and follow the laws of the land. But the ultimate truth that exists in this world, we have to access that in the same way that Muhammad and Christ and Tulsidas and Valmiki did, they, they did in their time. That's the way we should do it. There's a beautiful poem that says, just do the dance that you've been shown by everyone you've ever known. Do the dance that you've been shown by everyone you've ever known. It means in this world we have to follow. We have to start by following. When a child comes into this world, the child doesn't know mathematics. The child doesn't know mantra. The child doesn't automatically come with biology and chemistry. The child doesn't come with the ability to play a dholak. The child has to be reminded. The child has to be reminded. And the point I'm making is, every single individual when we come into this world, just do the, ta the dance that you've been shown by everyone you've ever known until the dance becomes your very own. Don't follow forever. Do the dance that you've been shown by everyone you've ever known, but until it becomes yours, until it becomes your very own. The author says, go on, throw some seeds off your very own. Meaning start doing your own dance. Try creating your own dance, your own steps. Go on, throw some seeds of your very own. Why? Because between the time that you have come into this world and the time that you go home, there is one dance you will have to do alone. It means that when we follow, it is good to follow other people. It is good to take guidance from other people. It is good to follow the scripture and honor the scripture, but don't be a slave to it. If you, if you RT the Ramayana every day, the teachings and the wealth of the Ramayana doesn't get translated to you. When Hindus worship a book, it means that I honor the knowledge, but more than that, I honor the source from which that information came from. And for you and I as individuals, as human beings, we need to tap into that source from where others have found it. We will do the dance that we've been shown. We will read the scripture. We will follow the teachings of everyone. But the catch is, we must make it our very own. So when you point to yourself and you see, I am here, it is an automatic guidance. It is a calibration that comes with every child that knows, that child knows that that I that is here is the same I that is there in you. And it is the same eye that is in the crook in Lavanti, and it is the same eye that is in the Swami that is meditating in the Himalaya. It is the same common eye that exists in every single human being. And the point is, devotees, the point is, friends, that if you want to access and you're sure about making the right choices in your life, consult your inner voice. That inner voice is always right. Some people say on our shoulders, there is one little voice that is the devil saying man no study them that devil voice it's ego that says don't let nobody make you feel that like you less than them don't let anybody make you feel and like this that little voice always demands importance that little voice reminds you that you are separate from everybody else you need to define yourself as separate from this entire creation that voice is ego but the other voice that we call spirit or sometimes we call conscience, or that voice that we call the voice of God that speaks to us sometimes silently, that is the voice that we need to pay attention to. In making decisions in your life, Tulsi Das is telling us, Bal, Buddhi, Vivek, and Samaya Vichari. Be cognizant of the times that you're living in. Don't follow automatically today what was right 160 years ago. Understand it. And if it makes sense and if it's applicable now, then follow it. If not, don't be a blind follower. Tulsi Das and all the scriptural injunctions of the world remind us that to find out what is the right way to do something in your life, consult your inner dialogue. And there are two criteria that we must follow. One, if something is right for us, it must be beneficial to me. But it doesn't stop there. If something is the right thing to do, it must be beneficial to me and those who will be impacted by that choice. It is not just beneficial for me. If so, then it will be a very selfish world. 
It will be a world where we justify all our actions because it benefits ourselves only. The right judgment, the right action comes from knowing that the action benefits myself as well as those who would be impacted by that judgment. If the thought, if the word, if the action satisfies these both, both these two criteria, then the Lord Tulsidas, the law of the universe is telling us, then we know what is right. In this, in this world, the answers that we're seeking, whether it's in family, whether it's in our working relations, whether it's among our social friends, whether it's within the neighborhood, whatever challenges and difficulties we see in this world, the solutions and the resolutions for those problems are not always very difficult things. Sometimes they're very simple. But what we have to do is shift the boundary to expand the paradigm, to move beyond the conditioning that we have been taught as young children doing the dance that we've been shown by everyone we've ever known. Unless we could step out of that and look at situations in our life beyond what we have been trained and conditioned to do and to see, the solutions are simple and readily available to us. If we can do that and train ourselves, the concept of right and wrong would become, would become contextual, it would become based on the issues at hand, but more than that, it will be based on the intentions that drives our action. Today I would like you to think about this. Think about those we may have judged in the past. Think about situations we may have judged our own self, where we, today, there are many people walking around feeling guilty about their past, having shame carried from many, many years ago. That shame is carried with us today. How many of us really need to do that? How many of us learn we must train ourselves to forgive our own self first? Because maybe we were not necessarily wrong. I ask you today to rid yourself of all the negative thoughts of right and wrong. And I'm saying not just wrong, but right and wrong. Because when we thought we were right, probably we were not. And start today with a clean slate. And know that whenever circumstances present themselves to you, in whatever way, in whatever form, use this voice. Use your eternal self. Use that self that is connected to all the other selves in the entire world and find out for yourself what is right and what is wrong. 